Hi guys, I'm EVM and welcome back. Now, too many times someone comes up to me on Twitter, in real life, wherever, and says, I really want an electric vehicle, but I just can't quite afford one yet, or the range isn't quite there yet, or I can't charge at home. Various valid reasons for not buying one. But then half of those come back to me later on and say, well, don't worry, we did get an electric car in the end. It's a self-charging hybrid. Now for me, a self-charging hybrid, as some manufacturers like to call it, is not an electric car, not even an electrified car. So I thought it's time to revisit a topic which I have touched on in the past. What is a self-charging hybrid? What is a plug-in hybrid? And what is a battery electric vehicle? What are their benefits? What are their downsides of each? And why do I not like self-charging hybrids or rather the name self-charging hybrid so much? Right, let's start with basically me wanting to use my new YouTube toy, a whiteboard. So I want to start with energy first. Where does the energy come from that all these vehicles have the option of using? With the self-charging hybrid, or in fact, no, I'll just call it self-charging hybrid to make it easy. In fact, let me put an SC up there just so we know what we're talking about. All of the energy has to come from one place in this case, and that is petrol. It cannot use electricity, it needs petrol. I'll, I'll come back to that in a second. A plug-in hybrid electric vehicle, its very name suggests that it can be plugged in, but of course it can use petrol and electricity in this case. You can plug it in, so you've got an option of either or both. Battery electric vehicle, of course, only gets its electricity from the plug. It cannot use a petrol engine, therefore we've got petrol only, petrol and electric, and electric. Now I want to go on to regenerative braking. This is a way of recapturing some of that lost energy that you use when you're accelerating. So when you slow down you can get some of that energy back. Now in a normal non-hybrid car for example you press the brake pedal and a brake pad touches a brake disc and the kinetic energy when it slows you down is effectively turned into heat. It's, it's lost, it's wasted energy. Whereas with regenerative braking, anything that has that, it basically recuperates some of that energy and puts it back into the battery. It turns kinetic energy back into electricity. Now, a hybrid, self-charging hybrid, sorry, uh, that, yes, that is capable of regenerative braking. A plug-in hybrid electric vehicle is also capable of doing that. And surprise, surprise, a battery electric vehicle can also generate its own electricity by braking. So they can all do the regen. Now, battery, of course, some of these will have larger sizes than what I'm going to suggest here. There's lots of variations. Some plug-in hybrid batteries are getting quite large now, but relative to each other, they all have this sort of level of battery. I'm going to say every self-charging hybrid battery by today's standards has a very small VS, very small battery. A plug-in hybrid electric vehicle has a small battery, it's an S, not a five, I promise. Uh, and a battery electric vehicle, that has a large battery. So again, there are many variations on the market, but roughly speaking, comparable to each other, you have a very small battery for a self-charging, a small battery for a plug-in hybrid, and a large battery for a battery electric vehicle. Now let's move on to fuel costs. How much will each one of these costs, roughly speaking, relative to each other in fuel? Now for this, I'm gonna to have to use three different pen colors, I think. So uh, ooh, red can be the worst. So the most expensive in terms of how much fuel you will use is the self-charging hybrid. I'm going to attempt to do a pound sign. Mm, okay, yeah, that, that's a red pound sign. You just have to bear with me on that one. So the self-charging hybrid is the most expensive in terms of fuel costs. The plug-in hybrid electric vehicle, now this could in theory run just on electricity, but as an average, this will use a bit of both and that, is going to be blue. So it's kind of in the middle in terms of fuel costs. Better than self-charging hybrid, certainly. Now, when it comes to the battery electric vehicle, again, in just terms of fuel costs alone, we have a green one because that's that's that's, that's good, isn't it? That's better. So uh, green good, blue middle, red not so good. So don't get me wrong, a self-charging hybrid is more efficient than just a, a normal petrol engine car, but compared to these two, that will be the most expensive to run 
followed by the plug-in hybrid, followed by the battery electric vehicle. Now, of course, the cost of the car itself is where it evens it out a little bit, at least for now. Battery electric vehicles, plug-in hybrids and self-charging hybrids have all got cheaper as the years go on. However, a battery electric vehicle has got cheaper in terms of percentage way, way more than the other two, mainly because the cost of batteries have come down and, of course, they're all batteries. They have lots of batteries. But the cost of a self-charging hybrid will be at the lower end of the scale. So we'll give that a green one. The uh, plug-in hybrid, again, kind of in the middle. That's going to get a blue one. Oh, yeah, I'm getting better at these. And the battery electric vehicle. That is the most expensive to buy at the moment. So <laughs> that's terrible. <laughs> the cheapest one will be the self-charging hybrid, followed by the plug-in followed by the battery electric vehicle. Now, according to Volkswagen CEO, very recently, they said that they expect price parity to be achieved by 2025 for battery electric vehicles compared to normal petrol engine vehicles. So in terms of manufacturing costs, it should be the same for these as it is for, well, not just these, but normal petrol engine cars as well. So this is a temporary situation. It won't be forever. But as it stands now, yes, the battery electric vehicle is the most expensive, and the self-charging is the cheapest. Now, eco, that basically means how green are these in terms of running them? Clearly, they all have an impact on the environment, but generally speaking, when you factor in the manufacturing of the cars and their lifespan, so let's imagine a car lasts 15 years, the manufacturing of that plus 15 years of running it on petrol equals X and so forth and so forth. So compared to each other in eco terms, that would be red, that would be the worst in terms of environmental impact. The plug-in hybrid electric vehicle, on average, would be, again, somewhere in the middle, and the battery electric vehicle is the greenest of the lot. Now, don't get me wrong, as I said, they all have an environmental impact, battery electric vehicles included. If the environment is your priority, I've always said this, then the best thing you can do isn't so much to get a battery electric vehicle, but to not have a car at all, then there won't be an impact to use public transport, cycle, walk, that sort of thing. But in the modern world, if you need personal transportation, as I do, I live quite rural, various work reasons mean we have to own a car, it might as well be a battery electric one if the environment is your priority. Note all the energy, all of the momentum that you have in a self-charging hybrid vehicle comes from petrol. You are burning petrol no matter what. So if anybody thinks that they're buying an electric car and it's a self-charging hybrid for me that is not an electric car it never will be it has a battery in it but ultimately the only way you can get energy in that battery is by burning petrol in the first place you have to burn petrol to accelerate up to speed and then slow down to put some of that energy back into the car or some of them will just run the petrol engine as a generator either way all of the energy that is in that car either comes from petrol driving the engine, uh, driving the wheels forward, sorry, or from the electric motor, which is powered by the battery, which is powered ultimately by the petrol engine. Now, self-charging literally means a vehicle that charges its traction battery without any interaction from the driver whatsoever. Now, this for me is where the confusion lies and why I've always hated the term self-charging. Forgetting the fact that for the past 20 years, it's just been called a hybrid, they brought this out purely as a marketing term. Do not be fooled into thinking that that is somehow miraculously getting energy out of nowhere. As I said earlier, it's all coming from one place, petrol. You can't plug it in. You have to burn petrol to get that regen. So therefore the energy starts all with burning what effectively is dirty fuel. It's a marketing term which is genuinely fooling people into thinking they have got an electric vehicle. All they're getting is effectively a more efficient petrol engine car. That's it. So again, apologies if you think that you have bought an electric car and it's a self-charging hybrid. Basically, if you can't plug it in, it is not an electric vehicle. A plug-in hybrid electric vehicle, however, this for me, some people don't like them. They think everybody should be driving a battery electric vehicle, but there is still a need for a plug-in hybrid electric vehicle. If I couldn't charge at home on my driveway where I am now, I could not own a battery electric vehicle. I've said this all along. There is no charging infrastructure near me at all. My council has got literally zero chargers. There are some coming, but at the moment, my nearest rapid charger is about nine miles away from my house. So that's an 18 mile round trip 
to use a rapid charger. And it's even further for a fast or a slow charger as well. So if you want something that is electric, if you want to drive on pure electric only, at least some of the time, a plug-in hybrid electric vehicle is the only solution right now. It's a stopgap, basically. It's the methadone to the battery electric vehicle. It is there for a reason. It won't be there forever. When battery electric vehicles can do three, four, five hundred miles of range for the same price as a standard petrol engine car, there will be no need for them. But as it stands right now, a plug-in hybrid electric vehicle is the only option for some people that want an electric car. If you want, you can actually drive a, a, a FEV on electric only. The range of course is very small, typically 10, 20, maybe 25 miles in the real world. But if you're just using it for short journeys, it, journeys, it is possible. Ultimately, what I'm saying is eventually technology will get to the point where we don't have to worry about the range or the charging speed of a BEV. But for now, a FEV has a purpose. For me, a hybrid electric vehicle doesn't have a purpose at all because it's just a, a, a more efficient petrol engine. You can still use a plug-in hybrid, but not plug it in. It effectively would become a normal self-charging hybrid. Notice that out of all this, they all do regenerative braking. This is something that Toyota, Lexus and all that say, well, we, you know, we get free energy back. That's, that, that's why it's a self-charging hybrid. Nobody calls a battery electric vehicle, a Tesla, for example, self-charging Tesla, do they? Can you imagine what trouble Tesla would get in if they started advertising their cars as self-charging? Because technically they do, they do the exact same thing as those do, but it's not advertised as that because that would be ludicrous and ridiculous to say so. I should also point out actually that several countries in the EU have banned the term self-charging hybrid because it's too confusing and ultimately not true. Only the UK's Advertising Standards Authority have not got it and have been fooled themselves. So that kind of backs up this claim that self-charging is a bad phrase. So to recap, a self-charging hybrid is ultimately not necessary these days. It's, it's been surpassed. It is the lowest end of technology and capability out of all of these vehicles here. A plug-in hybrid can be just a normal hybrid if you wish, but it's got the capability of being plugged in. So for me, the only two that are worth going for are these. That does look like something else, doesn't it? <laughs> I would never recommend a self-charging hybrid. I would still recommend a plug-in hybrid electric vehicle for those that cannot own a battery electric vehicle, a full electric car. Now, of course, it's not quite as good as that. There is a downside. You will be paying more for the plug-in hybrid compared to the self-charging hybrid. But for me, you will get that back when you sell the car on. When you trade the car in, you will get that extra that you've paid for its plug-in ability back again. It holds its value better than a standard normal hybrid. And of course, if used even vaguely sensibly, you should recoup most, if not all, and more of that cost in fuel savings alone. On the environmental side, again, I do stand by this. That is the greenest of all three. That's somewhere in the middle. And the self-charging hybrid as all of its energy effectively comes from dirty sources, petrol, that's why that gets the red circle. This, some people will argue with that it shouldn't be green because it gives people an idea that it's saving the planet. And as I said before, the best thing you can do is to get rid of your car completely. But if you need a car, this is the greenest option. And that applies even if it's a coal fired grid, which the UK isn't. In fact, for the last is, well, it's just broken a record yet again. For more than a month now, there has been zero coal generation in the UK. And we have a very, very, very clean grid compared to places like America and Poland. But again, there are many, 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 many surveys and studies and you know proper scientific stuff here, peer reviewed papers that always say the same thing. A battery electric vehicle or anything that's powered by electricity, even on a dirty grid, is still cleaner over its lifespan than a petrol engine car. No doubt someone will mention now the uh, heavy metal argument that what about the people dying in the mines digging up those heavy metals for the battery electric vehicle? I agree, that's a problem. And that's part of the impact I mentioned earlier. But I think oil, whether it's through wars or spillages or just emissions, causes a lot more damage to the environment and human beings. Just ask anybody that you know, went to Iraq, for example, that causes more damage to the environment and people than the battery electric vehicle does with its heavy metals. 
and that can be addressed and is being addressed. A lot of those heavy metals will be removed in future technologies, whereas that will always be that dirty. It will always be something that causes problems. Right, well, that's it, guys. Um, please do subscribe. It helps. And then I can do more of these whiteboard videos. Seriously, though, hopefully that helped in some way. Let me know what you think of this whiteboard explainer video, because for me, it's a lot easier when I'm referring to something on the video than doing graphics afterwards. And I don't have to spend hours doing graphics afterwards. So this for me, like Engineering Explained, that's where this kind of came from, if I'm honest, uh, which is a fantastic channel. Watch it if you haven't before. Um, this for me is a lot easier. But what do you think? Does this, does this work? Can you see it? Does it make sense? Do we have to make it bigger? Give me some feedback. Um, so yeah, thank you for watching guys and I'll see you soon.